This is the Spotlight Review of the brand new Just Release, and I'm not kidding, I just found these at my local Walmart store today. Anyway, it's Fortnite Series 2 by Jazzworks Toys. For the solo mode figures, we have Dark Bomber, Skull Trooper, and Havoc to add to our collection. This is going to be interesting. So, let's not waste any time. Let's go ahead and talk about the packaging as per take of every single video review on this channel. Up close, in your face! So, anyway, here's a good look at the character model from the video game. Very nice. Very cool. It's pretty much just a darker version of Bright Bomber. All right. So, here we have Dark Bomber Solo Mode. Harvest Snap Build. It's the figure herself looking pretty nice. On the back of the packaging, here we have that character art again of Bright Bomber from the video game. Fortnite Dark Bomber. The future's looking dark. Here's your little scan code thing for your iPhone if you want. Series 2 figures come in the line of Havoc, Toxic Trooper, Battle Hound, Skull Trooper, Calamity, and of course, Dark Bomber, with more contents on the way soon. And all this stuff down here is not important, so let's move on. So now we're going to take a look at Skull Trooper's packaging here. And here's the nice character model from the video game. And there's the name for Skull Trooper right there. And here's a look at the figure himself, looking pretty nice from the packaging. And on the back of the packaging, we've got Skull Trooper from Fortnite. Victory runs bone deep. Ha! 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 Now, uh, once again, here's a look at the figures that consists of Series 2, even though they're not the figures, they're just the models from the game themselves, with more on the way. Finally, here's the packaging for Havoc's figure, and here's an image of Havoc taken from the video game, the figure consisting in the middle of the packaging, and Havoc solo mode at the bottom, with Jazzwares at the very bottom. And take a look at the back of the packaging, and here we've got Havoc for as much as we can make out here without this getting in the way, from Fortnite. Havoc, striking fear into the opposition. And of course, here's a look at all the Series 2 figures once again, with more coming soon. Alright, so now that that's all said and done, what do you say we go ahead and open up these beauties here by uh, destroying the packaging? The only way to actually get it out anyway, so uh, snip, snip, snip. Clip, clip, clip. For anyone that really wanted to see these character models from the car backs, here's a good look at them without anything getting in the way. So here we have Havoc. Here's a look at Skull Trooper. And here's Dark Bomber. Alright, so before we take a look at the figures, let's take a look at the contents that comes with every figure. And that is their product catalog, which is showcasing all the skins, or should I say outfits, which are basically your action figures of this series so far. So this is pretty much as identical as the first release of the product catalog, but we do have some nice additions here with Black Knight. Battle Hound, Calamity, Dark Bomber, Havoc, Skull Trooper, The Visitor, and Toxic Trooper, with more dropping on the way. And I don't see anything new for the weapons here. And now for some harvesting tools, we have the Autocleave, Axe Caliber, Cliffhanger, Lug Axe, Pick Squeak, The Reaper, Reckoning, Silver Fang, and Thunder Crash. As for the back bling, the only one that I can see that's new is Off World Rig. And our new addition to the glider set, we have the Beach Umbrella. And now we're going to take a look at the action figures, just ask what you want to see. How cool are these 4-inch figures when compared to Series 1? Well, we'll get to that, starting off with, well, I guess we'll go with you first. Here is Skull Trooper. So, it's not McFarlane Toys quality, that's for sure. Alright, let's just get that out of the way, it's the obvious, but it is pretty good. As you can see, the figure's painted from the front and the back. Got some nice detailing here for his boots and pretty much the overall attire here. We've got some nice cuffs here for his gloves, and then we've got the gauntlet here, which is a common thing that all the characters in the game actually have. I guess that's how they call their harvesting tools, or if they're going to build, like, uh, four pieces and all that. Anyway, the face on the figure looks pretty nice. Of course, why wouldn't it? I mean, this is a very nice paint job here, with the eyes looking straight forward, and a nice grin for his skull. 
And the band that's wrapped around the bicep is actually a separate piece. I can rotate it around without any hindrance. The figure does support a pocket pouch here on the hip. It also has a pocket pouch here on the belt, which is kind of hard to make out because of the paint job, but yes, that is a belt. So outside of the white and the black, there really isn't that much paint detail on the figure, but you do have some silver here for these sections of his feet. And he's got some blue here, which is supposed to be the detail coming from his arm gauntlet, but the problem is it's kind of a sloppy job here as it's not painted correctly dead center. Anyway, let's get to the articulation now. He does have a ball joint at the head, and he does have a hinge joint at the neck. Shoulders are universally jointed, so you do get your pin disc for inward and outward movement, and that also includes a swivel for a full 360 rotation. We have a swivel cut above the elbow section, and the elbow joint is single jointed, and it only gets a little less than 90 degrees of bend. You have rotation at the wrist, which also has a hinge joint for inward and outward movement on both hands. There's a ball joint at the upper torso, so this figure also consists of a waist swivel joint. Going down to the legs, and the hips do have some nice articulation with this much kicking forward, and that much going back. And you can pull off your iconic JCVD split, so there's your still quality people. We also have a swivel cut at the thigh section. The knee joints are double jointed and they do consist of more than 90 degrees of bend. There's a hinge joint for up and down movement at the feet, which also includes a very lovely ankle rocker pivot. So for the harvesting tool that the figure comes with, he comes with the Reaper, which is nothing more than a scythe. With some nice paint work here for the highlighting of the blade piece. I suppose that this entire piece is actually molded in this kind of brownish color here. And like all weapons that figures come with, the figure should actually be able to hold it just fine with no problems as you can see. And that's not all, Skull Trooper also comes with a nice displayable piece which you can also attach other pieces to and build your own fort or whatever you want. So go ahead and pop the figure on here via peg and hole system and there you go. And moving right along to Havoc, which is pretty much a straight up repaint. Minus a few pieces that have been removed from the figure sculpting, this is a straight up repaint, a color change from Raptor. And I'm not joking, as you can see, everything about this figure is exactly one and the same, minus a few inconveniences. And he's missing that very nice headset. He does have some nice imprinted designs here as we've got the military symbol right here on this side and then we got the skull symbol here on this side which is pretty much the same for Raptor. And then you got your bandolier with the uh, bullet shells here. And there's a good look at the back of the figure. As you can see, we got some camo effect here with different spots going on with the suit, which does make sense. Nice sculpting of the knee pads. And the boots look very nice, especially with those very lovely soles. Look at that. Now, if there's one gripe I've got about the figure, it's the head sculpt. And it's not really the sculpt of the figure, it's just the paint job. The eyes are too big, and he looks like he's terrified at something. So anyway, into the articulation, we do have a ball joint at the head, and just like Raptor and the others, he does have a hinge joint at the neck. With a very nice pin disc at the shoulder that does have a very good clicking, and you get your full 360 rotation as well. There's a swivel cut above the elbow. The elbow is single jointed and it does get a little less than 90 degrees of bend. Got your wrist rotation as well with a hinge joint for inward and outward movement. The torso is ball jointed, swivel cut at the weight. The hips are universally jointed with this much kicking forward and that much going back. And yes, you can pull off a very lovely JCVD split. There's thigh rotation as you can see. Double jointed knees, that does get 9 degrees of bend and then some. And there's a hinge joint for up and down movement at the feet, which also includes a okay ankle rocker pivot. It doesn't really work as good as any of the other figures. And so for accessories, the figure has his harvesting tool, which is a lug axe. And as you can see, we got this lug wrench here, which is duct taped to... Uh, a longer wrench, as you can see, he's got some nice detail here, which does make it look pretty convincing here. And of course, the figure can hold the weapon with no problems, and if you wanted to, you could probably get it in both hands. Took a little time to wrestle it in, since he has some very broad shoulders, but it can be done, as I said. Last thing that Havoc comes with is his displayable stand piece, so let's go ahead and peg him on here. Now, this is pretty loose fitting, but I think it will hold him just fine. And finally, we come to the less unfortunate action figure of this line so far and I gotta say Dark Bomber I anticipated just a little bit more out of this one so overall the sculpting and the paint job on the figure is pretty good there is some sloppiness with the paint job but hey it's all right it's not that bad my real gripe about this figure is that there's not enough detail going on here as you would have all these nice honeycomb shapes on the suit for Bright Bomber 
Dark Bomber has nothing but smooth plastic, as you can see. And if we were to take a real look at the character model from the game, you would notice all these symbols here that goes around the entire suit is nowhere to be found, nowhere imprinted on this figure. And it kind of kind of makes me wonder why that is. Look, I'm sure if this figure was a $20 priced action figure, we may have got that detail, but I really can't see why they couldn't try and put a little more effort into this. I don't even know if they were actually looking at this when they were actually going for the color palette of this figure here. And it really is unfortunate that Jazzwork skipped the beat on this figure because it is still a really nice action figure. As I've already presented, it is not the same figure. This is not an exact repaint. There has been some stuff that's been removed to make her a whole lot different when compared to Bright Bomber. And the only thing that I can really tell that's one and the same is just the head sculpt of the figure being a different color change. So she does have this nice highlight here of purple for the front band of her hair. And the shades on the top of her head are painted in a very dark brown, so it's kind of hard to see that they're actually there in the first place. And I love the color of her eyes here. This definitely reminds me of Cortana a little bit. But a real lackluster attention to detail, which is something that I could fix if I wanted to myself with a little customizing, is that this section here at her torso, this piece is supposed to be ripped up. But it's not to say that they didn't try, which they actually did paint the back of the figure, which I do appreciate. But still, something about the color is just lackluster. Like, it's really good, but it's just not enough for the figure. Plus, they didn't even bother to paint her arm gauntlet. That's unfortunate. But I can't say it is nice that they did paint her fingerless gloves here, which I do appreciate. And take a look at the bottom of the figure, and as you can see, we do have the nice shin guard on her left side leg, which does have nice straps going all around. That's very nicely sculpted. A lot of nice stuff going on here. And then here's the right side of her leg, which has no protection at all. But once again, the sole of the shoes are very nice. Alright, so let's move on to articulation. And Dark Bomber does have a ball joint at the head, which also includes a hinge joint at the neck, which is not hindered by her ponytail, which is very nice. And then we got a pin this shoulder here that does have some nice clicking, so you get some inward and outward movement. And you got your full 360 rotation. A swivel cut above the elbow. The elbow is single jointed like all the others, but at least she does get 90 degrees of bend. There's wrist rotation, which also includes a hinge joint for inward and outward movement with these small hands. The upper torso is ball jointed like all the others, so flex it, girl. And Dark Bomber also has a waist swivel cut. And the legs are universally jointed with this much kicking forward and that much going back. And you can pull off a very lovely JCVD split, so here you go again. And then we got our thigh swivel cut as you can see which dark bomber also has double jointed knees that does get way more than nine degrees of bend and then there's a hinge joint for up and down movement at the feet which also includes a very nice ankle rocker pivot and so here's her harvesting tool which is the thunder crash which is not an exact repaint as it does have some nice retooling here with the horns when compared to the rainbow smash as you can see the wheels on the bottom do have some nice spikes and taking a good look at the side of both Here's the other side of both. Here's a good look at the front. As you can see, we got the nice unicorn horn, but we also have some extra horns here to make it look more devilish. Just look at those eyes. Look how evil this one is compared to this doofus. It's a very nice uh, paint effect going on here with the red fading into the purple. I do like that. And of course, you can actually have the figure, yes, hold her weapon, as all figures should be able to hold their weapons. And finally, let's give the figure her displayable piece, which we can use to build some forts and all that, if we've got a bunch, which I do. Now, it wouldn't be a proper video review if I didn't give you a pretty good size comparison with other figures out of this line, so let's dare to compare with... 4-inch Drift, Raptor, Carbide, Bright Bomber, and Technique. So in the end, in my conclusion, it is another triumph by Jazzwares when it comes to their Fortnite 4-inch action figures. I gotta say, I really do like these figures. However, I do have some negativity when it comes to Dark Bomber. I don't think they pulled out all the stops that they were going for. I think maybe because of the size of these figures and because of the budget that they want, they couldn't fit as much detail as they really wanted to. So they had to skip a beat, unfortunately, with that one. Regardless of Skull Trooper's pretty cool. Havoc is A-OK -okay for a straight up repaint minus a few things that were removed from the original mold, which is unfortunate. And Dark Bomber is OK, just not perfect. Having said that, I love the harvesting tools that these figures come with, especially the Reaper. I love the Reaper. I love the way that scythe looks. The displayable pieces do work just fine on these figures when compared to uh, Series 1 Raptor, which he falls off of his very easily. So as a whole, 
Even though this isn't the complete wave that came out for Series 2, I gotta say, I'm looking forward to finding the rest of these figures and continuing collecting this line of figures that I have yet to actually see of the character models in the video game itself. So I may not know much about Fortnite the video game. I may not know the background on these characters if they even have one. But regardless, I think the figures are pretty freaking sweet. And if you don't know anything about Fortnite, you can still get on board with these action figures. Because that's what they are. Action figures. They're fully posable. They have a great amount of paint applications, minus some nitpicking with this run. And the harvesting tools and the weapons that they come with is pretty much on par with what you get from the game. And of course, all these displayable pieces can actually be attached to one another to build up bridges and forts and whatever you want, combat scenery if you'd like. I really do like the way that Jazzwares is giving a really good effort on this line when compared to all their other past licenses that they lost because of disappointment. So if you happen to come across Series 2, which I just did today, I found them at my local Walmart store, that's your best bet to try and find these figures at the moment. So feel free to pick them up and let me know what your overall thoughts and opinions are on these figures. And I think that's pretty much all there is to say, so I'm going to leave it at that. If you have any questions or comments, you know to do, hit it down below in the comment section of the video. If you like today's video review, hit the thumbs up button. Don't forget to give me a sub up. If you didn't like it, hit the thumbs down. Don't forget to throw in the towel. And until then, my friends, this is the Unprofessional Tour Reviewer Hasbro sign off by saying when the opportunity persists, don't give up on your dreams, siege the moment, and thank you for watching.